where a panel of Aptum experts discuss how we are building a sustainable and resilient future for our communities, the natural world, and our clients in the government, commercial and industrial, and energy markets. My name is Mark Zacchino here at Aptum. I'm a director of business development. Today we'll be discussing the Aptum Archaeological Services. This is a special episode because we are recording at the renowned Metacroft Rock Shelter Archaeological Site. I'm going to let our panel of experts introduce themselves and tell a little bit about their roles here at Aptum. My name is Jacob Spuck. Uh, I'm an Aptum archaeologist and geoarchaeologist. Um, a geoarchaeologist is someone that studies the dynamics between uh, humans and landforms and, and how they interact with one another. Um, I also have a background in geophysics, um, which is uh, something that's very uh, useful in modern day archaeology. It's uh, a non-invasive technique that's used to uh, study archaeological sites such as uh, cemeteries or um, you know certain burial sites. Uh, most importantly it it allows for the archaeological site to not be destroyed um, but also provides a great deal of detail as to what's located below the surface. My name is Jim Adebasio. I'm a senior scientist at Aptum. I have been the principal investigator of the excavations at Meadowcroft Rock Shelter since the, since the inception of the project in 1973. I would like to think that we are capable of bringing to our clients the level of archaeology represented at Meadowcroft much more so than our clients ever expected us to be able to do. Great, thank you for being here. I want to begin with the background of Aptum's archaeological services. I think Metacroft is a fitting place to start, especially since we are here right now. Jacob, why, why is Metacroft such a unique site, and what is the importance of bringing this site to the attention of Aptum and pretty much to our clients? Yeah, so I think, I think first and foremost, um, <clears throat> We're sitting next to uh, uh, an archaeologist that's that's worked on um, uh, this particular archaeological site for for 50 plus years. Um, one of the things, first things I noticed as, as a geoarchaeologist that comes in here is the meticulousness at which this site has been excavated. Um, everything in the the uh, current excavations has been excavated with very small instruments. Um, the stratigraphical layers of this site which are unique in themselves um, are broken down to a level of detail that is as fine-grained as I've ever seen uh, and you know most importantly I, th I think that that is the level that is the standard that that Aptum sets is that um, you know we are prepared to work in, on some of the most fascinating archaeological sites um, known to mankind uh, we have a team of um, coastal engineers that have an archaeologist that sits within that department. Um, they are continuously surveying off the, the continental shelf um, for sites that are uh, potentially submerged beneath uh, the, the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and that is just kind of the, the, the archaeology department that we built here at Aptum is that um, we are going to bring in the best and brightest of, of uh, sub-disciplines of archaeology and, and we're going to really, uh, you know, kind of throw the kitchen sink at the, the most challenging research questions that are out there in the field of archaeology. So Jacob, so we come to Metacroft today. It's, it's a unique spot. It, it's an important project, not necessarily a project that Aptum is currently working on, but it certainly uh, brings forth this background of our employees as we move forward to work for other clients, wouldn't sure. you say? And, and being here, can you maybe, let's talk a little bit about Metacroft. Can you give us a lay of the geologic or geoarchaeological setting here? Sure. Okay. So, so one of, one of the, um, the common uh, uh, you know, portrayals of, of sites like Meadowcroft is that, you know, there were humans here and, you know, there were uh, glaciers all around them, you know, they were hunting, um, you know, mammoths and, and uh, you know, humans were the apex predator of, of, of this area. And a lot of that is, is sort of uh, Hollywooded, if, if you will. Um, uh, 
you know, in, in all reality, the, the inhabitants of Meadowcroft, they, they never were, were looked outside of the rock shelter and, and saw um, glaciation. But by the time this, uh, uh, the earliest inhabitants were here, uh, the glacials had already begun retreating. Meadowcroft is really the uh, pre-contact Holiday Inn or Airbnb, right? So you didn't have you didn't have folks that were uh, you know permanent residents there. Um, you know it wasn't it wasn't their um, like they were setting up shop there for for years on end. It was it was a you know it was a, a sort of a, a, a escape from some of these conditions and, and the elements that that would have been present um, very early on. And Jim, I know you have a history of Metacroft, even before coming on board at Apton. What changes such as technical innovations have you seen over the years? I think for a, a classic example would be that originally we mapped artifacts and eco-facts or ecological items in place using essentially line levels, plumb bobs, tape measures, and the like. And nowadays, this is all done with very precise instrumentation, total stations and the like, which Aptum has in abundance. And that is just a small example of how technology has changed. The big thing here is attention to detail. And it's true whether or not you're doing archaeology or any other line of work. You have to be attentive to the minutest changes possible. And the thing that attracted us to this site originally are precisely those things that would attract modern campers to this day. So, so Jim, you know the, the question out there is, was there any human remains? No, actually human remains at the site we didn't anticipate any, nor did we find any. This is not the sort of place you go to bury your dead. The only human remains we have from the site are discarded human teeth, worn teeth, such as you might throw away if you weren't putting them under your kid's pillow with the proper amount of coinage or whatever. And these teeth themselves are potentially instructive about the Aboriginal inhabitants of the site, but that's all we have. Now, some of some of the faunal faunal remains have have you tested? I know that somewhere around the the range of a hundred hundred thousand bones. Um, we, we have nine hundred and fifty six thousand animal bones from the site, representing over one hundred and fifty separate species of so practically every animal that ever lived in this part of Pennsylvania during the Holocene or recent geological period. We have very few indications of larger game animals like mammoth or mastodon because they would have been confined to open areas such as are not present in the Cross Creek drainage and consequently we don't have any of them. We think the turnover to a more recent floral and faunal climate record probably occurred in a relatively brief period of time between about 10,500 and 10,000 radiocarbon years ago or 8,500 to 8,000 calendar years ago. But each of those stratas are unique and I, I think this is your secret sauce. Each of those individual stratas were looked at by grain size, shape shapes, um, color changes, and you, your method was to isolate those, correct? Yes, it was. We, we believed from the very beginning that it was a critical to define the stratigraphy of the rock shelter in as precise a means as was humanly possible. We had a variety of other techniques, scan electron microscopy to study the diagenesis of individual quartz grains, and so forth. Our students were trained to recognize those kinds of changes from the very beginning. And what Aptum tries to do with its employees is to acquaint them with the details of stratigraphic changes 
as they might encounter them in open sites or a variety of other environments for which we are contracted to do the work. Jacob, what sets Aptum apart from our competitors? So, so I think first and foremost, uh, what, what sets Aptum aside um, is, you know, I've always kind of followed this, this motto, if, if, if you can do archeology span correctly in one place, uh, you can do it anywhere in the world. Um, and I think the, the, uh, the gym sitting to my left over here uh, has certainly um, uh, brought that theory to, to fruition. Um, as someone that's worked all over the world, not just at Meadowcroft, but at, at Vero Beach and, and many of the sites that have uh, really redefined archaeology in a lot of ways. Um, and we're still pushing the forefront of technology. You know, our, our coastal resources group has um, sub-bottom profilers, uh, uh, magnetometers, um, side scan sonar, and they are currently surveying um, offshore all over the Atlantic and, and Gulf Coast. Um, if you think about it, at the end of the um, uh, Pleistocene, early Holocene, we had you know, an area of equivalent to almost three times the size of the United States across the world that is now submerged underwater. Um, and, you know, no, from a terrestrial archaeological standpoint, uh, you know, we have all sorts of specialists, geomorphologists, soil scientists, geophysicists. Uh, and then on that, you know, marine and underwater archaeology service, we also have uh, uh, archaeologists that are kind of working on the next frontier of archaeology. Um, surve surveying these offshore sites. So Jim, you're one of the leading field archaeologists in our time. Build all the methodology here over the last 40, 50 years. So basically, how do you, how do we take that methodology and build it into Aptum's archaeological group? So you attempt to use within the boundaries imposed by the particular project the same attention to detail using modern technology that we did at Meadowcroft. Archaeology is a destructive field. When we locate and characterize archaeological sites, we are subsequently destroying them at the same time. And especially during the excavation process, it's absolutely necessary to document that activity in such a way that people know exactly what you've done at a particular spot on the landscape and to understand what people were doing on that landscape before, before and after the period that you're focusing upon. So we still don't know what's underneath that, that one third of, of Meadowcroft and, and that is kind of you know, it's it's kind of something for an, if if you're an inpatient person, you know, you you get kind of uh, 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 sweaty palms thinking about it. But it, it's the field of archaeology. You always kind of got to pass the torch, and, and, and you have to understand that um, for such a tech, technologically driven field, there's always going to be something tomorrow that you didn't have access to. And I think. Meadowcroft represents or represented the state of the art not only at the time it was done, but archaeology isn't static. It, it changes constantly and to incorporate the changes into the fabric of how we do things is a critical thing. It's not just about asking questions about the past, it's finding the data to answer those questions that becomes the critical factor. So there is a lot to be learned about Meadowcroft in the future and Aptum's role in that potentially is to foster the environment where you can in fact benefit by understanding in greater detail the who's, what's, where's and when's of antiquity. So with that, with that, Aptum has a solid foundation moving forward, wouldn't you say? Yeah, you know, companies are, are always going to evolve and adapt and, and bend, bend with the times, but, um, you know, 
back to my back to the, the one quote I referenced. If, if you can do archaeology correctly, you can do it anywhere. Um, you know, the fundamentals are there. Um, the the technology is something that will be that X variable that changes, but it doesn't have to be that headwind. Uh, it, we've, as a company, we're, we've learned to use it as a tailwind. Um, you know, it's 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 uh, what, what can be done. You know, I, I fairly recently just flew a, a, a drone that you know was able to display lidar imagery, thermal imagery, and aerial photography simultaneously. Um, you're able to see things in three different um, wavelengths. And if you think of the power for this for the future, um, it, it's, it's just, you know, possibilities are endless. Um, and, you know, again, I think, I think that one of the things that, that we do better than anyone else is we find, we find the person or persons within various specialties and we use them, we use their momentum, uh, not against us, but, but with us. Uh, but, uh, you know, our, at the end of the day, our, our goal is, is to um, be at the forefront of this field, be a competitive, not just uh, a local uh, and regional company, but a, an international company. And I would say, take these large global ideas and, and condense them down into local areas so that we can do this all over the planet you know uav surveys can be used all over the planet um uh and you know it, it, some of the technology out there it is very global in nature it, it's you know it takes experts from all over the world but it can be done on a, a small um a small area in west virginia or, or, or anything like that so at them you know we've already teamed with the coastal is there anything else, is sustainability anything else with an Aptum we're looking at? I think the discussions are out there. Any opportunity that comes up, we're open to discuss with anyone internal to, to team up with our yeah. internal people. And I would say, I would say on, on the back of the coastal, um, you know, one of the things is we know where a lot of archaeological sites are. Um, and if you, if, if you look at, at Meadowcroft, um, I think I had this conversation with Jim right when right when I arrived. You know, it's been 10 years since I I had been here, but the first thing I noticed when I came back is uh, the engineering behind the, the the site. I mean, you you could take a, a engineering college class at this location, um, and what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that we need to keep this site preserved. This is beyond us. This is this is something that we want 100 years from now, once we're all gone, we, we want people to be able to access. And the challenges are real to make that happen. We have our coastal team that says, sure, we know where these sites are located. How do we protect them, preserve them? Uh, we have uh, one of the things that we're really, really uh, kind of astounding at is, is archaeological modeling. and predicting where sites are located, predicting vulnerability for sites that uh, need kind of that extra measure of protection. Um, uh, you know, certainly geoarchaeology um, uh, is a field that has really come to prominence. Um, uh, you know, mapping uh, archaeological sites from back when Jim started in the early 1970s, where you see a lot of the hand drawing, um, it's, it's much different today. You know, we can uh, 3D laser scan sites, which preserves them forever. You know, if you think about, um, you know, sites down in Florida that, you know, may be exposed to hurricanes, um, not only pre-contact sites, but historical sites, um, once they're 3D scanned, you really have that level of detail forever. What will future generations see that we can't presently see in that? And that is really a level of thinking that um, a, a lot of archaeologists, unfortunately, don't have, and that, that you know, we're certainly trying to instill is um, we want to be doing the archaeology of, of the mid uh, 20, 21st century. Jim, Jacob, thank you for taking the time to show us around Metacroft today. It was certainly a pleasure to do so. We're glad that you took the opportunity to be here. It was a great day. Yep, thank you all. I mean, one of the most interesting sites in the world. Pleasure to be here.
Come back next month for more Aptum expertise. In the meantime, please subscribe to Aptcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts.